Hey, good morning, everyone. Trackman 44 here. Hey, you know we've been working on this old uh, this old 44 special. I was doing the uh, the startup video on it, and it strung out exceptionally long because I went into a hydraulic repair in pretty much in detail, and it just got stretched out way too long. I was going to have to cut too much stuff out of it. So what I did is I took out that segment on that little bit of a hack I did to that hydraulic, that nasty old broken up hydraulic control valve repair because there was something unique that I had to do to it and you're going to see it in this video. But I backed all this time out of that startup or first start video to highlight this specific repair or hack that I had to do to this control valve assembly in order to get everything assembled. That way it just keeps that great big long startup video uh, you know from being being so long. Now I've had to make a whole new gasket for this uh, for this housing right here. And of course, everything is super clean on the inside. I got the new uh, the, the new lever installed okay with the roll pin, uh, and it's in the configuration it needs to be in. The next thing comes down to this guy right here, which is the uh, the actual quadrant control. It's going to be a little hard to fit that in here without being able to see inside, because there's a pair of fingers over on the other side that this has to engage in, while the other set of fingers in here attached to this arm where the other end of the rod that is attached to this arm has to fit on a set of fingers on the other side of the same component. That's going to be a bit of a uh, trick. And of course I've got a, an o-ring here. It's in good shape so uh, that's going to be okay but there's no other gasket on this particular surface. You see the o-ring indention so this is going to have to go in here then this will rotate to I think about this orientation here and that allows the quadrant to be in the rear position which would be up. So at any rate, I'm going to have to ferret that in there. There was one other thing I had to make too. Underneath here, if you take a look, you can see a, a fresh piece of cork. There was actually a dried up cork gasket underneath there and so I had to take my gasket cutters and make that perfectly round cork gasket and then I had to fit three notches into it. So that's actually kind of tight right now because that gasket needs to be squeezed in. So what, I'm do what I've done I've got the lock nut backed off just a little bit, but I'm going to tighten that down and squeeze that gasket and then work that with that quadrant lever and then adjust this lock nut until I get uh, the right tension that I feel it needs to have on it. So I'll be right back as soon as I get this ferreted into place. Well, I think you got to admit it's beginning to look um, a little bit better than what it was whenever we started out. Anytime you mess with hydraulics and hydraulic components, there's always, um, always some aggravations involved. But now that we're actually able to look in and around this thing, this was a massive blowout. I mean, it was a massive blowout. They did not They did a good enough job, but they didn't do quite as good as what they needed. Well, hey guys, I'm here assembling or finishing up the assembly of that, um, of that uh, quadrant set um, and also that housing and everything, you know. And uh, I struck a stump, so to speak. The old man always said whenever we run into a problem, he just struck a stump. What happened? You have to understand how the quadrant and how the, the draft device on some of these things work. Okay, well, if you have hydraulics in your tractors, you understand draft control, especially when you're plowing or using a blade or something like that. It, uh, it minimizes the movement of the blade or allows it to kind of follow the contour of the ground. Well, in order to do that, that hydraulic has to do something inside the system to allow that to happen. Whenever I went to put this together, remember on this one component here, we have this L-shaped a little pin right here and that pin actually inserts into the portion that attaches to the draft control which happens to be this guy right here okay now the draft control actually will hook say for instance in on the left hand side of this and you can see how that pivots and this will go up and down whenever you move your quadrant lever this guy right here is your quadrant lever and it has to insert into this guy right here just like this well this is spring loaded so whenever it's unpowered or in the static position like it is, the spring's got it pushed all the way up to the top. With it all the way up to the top at this angle right here, there is no way that you can actually fit this guy in. No configuration whatsoever that you can fit this guy in and get it to meet up to the slot. Can't happen because of the machining and everything like that. There's just not enough room for it to happen. So you can't depress it. If you depress it to put it where it's in alignment or it will reach, all that happens is the spring pops it back up. So this is a hack that I did to this 
this particular cylinder, and it's strictly for these Massey Harris cylinders. They might be able to implement it in some other application, I don't know. But this will be a hack just specifically for the 44 series or the series of tractors that have this style of, of hydraulic control and hydraulic um, cylinder and uh, draft control. you got to remember, now, grindings or metal shavings, dust, things like that is just the killer to hydraulic systems. It'll just get in there and it'll just eat everything away. So you got to take care if you're going to do something like I, what I did. I could definitely have disassembled the entire assembly and cleaned everything complete and thoroughly and installed it in sequence in the way it would be in the factory. But I don't want to go through all that trouble because what the heck, you know, 70 some year old tractor, there's no rust or anything in it, good clean oil. So I think it's going to work fine when I put it together. So I don't want to go through that trouble. So you have to make sure if you're going to do what I'm doing to collect or make sure none of that grinding dust or shavings gets in the oil system. So you have to have a vacuum cleaner. You have to have a vacuum cleaner that will insert into this opening right here. Because what we're going to do is we're going to go to the back side of this right here and we're going to drill a hole that's right in alignment with this guy here. Now I'm going to show you what the finished product is and explain to you how this functions and how I was able to assemble it very simply the first time instead of like the hour I spent yesterday trying to get it to assemble whenever there, it was not going to go no matter what. I was able to determine if I depressed this spring down to this particular level right here that would give me adequate access to insert that assembly right here and the dimensions work to where it would just slide right perfectly into this guy right here. However, you still can't see it. So if you stick it in and it's below it, it's this is not going to do what it's supposed to do. Or if you stick it in and it goes above it, it's going to do the same thing. It's not going to function. It's going to be, well, it's not going to function at all because your quadrant portion isn't attached to the uh, to the draft control or to this to the hydraulic system. And I think that's what happened whenever this thing here blew out before. I think somebody had disassembled it to make the repair, to make a repair, and they put it back together improperly. And I think the hydraulic pressure just shot this up and just blew the whole complete end off of this thing or the whole top off of this thing. But at any rate, what I did, I determined the height that I needed to depress this in order to get this perfectly level with the opening of the, uh, of the slot right here, or the hole right here. So I marked and drilled me a hole right here, all with the vacuum cleaner running in that hole right there, stuck all the way over right next to where the drill bit's going to enter. Once I got that hole drilled, I went ahead and used a, uh, a quarter inch pipe tap and threaded quarter inch pipe threads into this thing, all the time with the vacuum cleaner running to suck all that debris inside of it. So whenever I get done, we'll be able to seal this with a quarter inch pipe plug. Now don't be concerned at all about how thick or how thin this might be simply because it's it's a quarter inch thick and that's plenty of thickness for a pipe thread to seal. The only thing I have to be careful of and I've already double checked it is when I type the, tighten this up that this doesn't insert far enough inside the opening to interfere with the operation of this little fellow right here. If it goes in too far it's not going to function but I've made sure that that's safe. That's okay. So now take a look inside here. So I was able to depress the, the depress it down and use a, a thin flat screwdriver and stick into the top of the hole and hold it in position with my flashlight setting right here. Then I was able to take this and slip it in literally in three seconds. I could watch it match up and engage perfectly because I'd painted the end of the stem yellow and you can actually see it inside here now moving back and forth. moving this portion, this side here, of the, uh, of the hydraulic control. And now the draft control is attached to the other side, and you can see it. That's this little aluminum arm right here that actually was broken, and I had to change to the new one. So that's pretty much it. I'm going to put the uh, pipe dope and everything on the plug, put the plug in, and then we're going to go back to business of installing this back on a tractor. So here's my quadrant doing what it's supposed to do. Everything is nice and tight. You can see everything moving inside the opening right here. I got my pipe sealant. It's a blue pipe sealant. It's not uh, not a Loctite, but still even be careful with your pipe sealant because if you get it real messy and get it on the inside of this, it'll cure over a period of time and it'll flake off and also get drawn into the oil. So make sure you don't have anything beyond the tips of the threads whenever you thread these guys in.
And I agree the proper way to do it, more than likely, if this is a total restoration situation, would be to completely disassemble everything, just like I indicated, uh, would probably be the proper way to do it. Uh, but it does not matter to me in the least bit. The main thing you have to remember, though, is to make sure that you have to keep the uh, the system clear of any of that particulate, any of those me metallic particulates, because that will kill your hydraulic pumps. Your hydraulic systems have a close tolerance, and any amount of debris at all is detrimental to the system or could have a potential hazardous effect on it. So at any rate, this thing is ready to go back together. Am I recommending that you do it? No, I'm just kind of throwing it out there that this is what I had to do in order to get by and assemble. I could not think of any other trick that, that would possibly get it done. But this worked fine, and uh, I'm absolutely certain it's not going to leak. This is nothing more than a pipe plug in a pressurized area, and it's going to uh, seal just fine. Now the part is not so much fun. This is not bad. It's probably 85 pounds. Sure, I'm glad I shined up that pin and put anti seize on it. I was able to tap that in pretty easy with the heel of my fist. Well, guys, there you have it. Now, right or wrong, I'm not telling you guys to do it. I'm sure that you guys know the proper way to do it is totally disassemble the entire control valve assembly and the whole bit and assemble it in the proper sequence. You know, but I didn't have to didn't have the need or the desire to go to that detail. So I just went ahead and did it this way here. And so uh, we'll wait and see how the uh, how the, the hack works out for me. Still don't know if it's gonna work yet or not because I'm not quite done with the startup and everything and, and ironing out all the little problems with, uh, with the tractor itself yet. So you know what, having said all that, this is uh, Tractor Man 44 and I'm out of here guys.